Welcome back once again to The Breakfast. We're going straight into the major stories making headlines this morning across uh, the nation. And uh, this morning we have with us in studio Mr. Gulahon Olujede. Thank you so much for uh, joining us. Good morning to you. Good morning. Nice to be here. We also have, uh, of course, joining us virtually Mr. Um, Ademola Kingbola, the publisher of the Podium Media. Good morning. Thanks for joining us, sir. Good morning. Thanks for having me. All right. Absolutely. We're going, first of all, into stories from the uh, daily independent newspapers. One of them, of course, has made uh, conversations across the whole country, maybe even the whole continent, in the last 24 hours. And that is about the service chiefs that have been replaced. It says over there, service chiefs replacement too late in the day. New service chiefs asked to hit the ground running. We can't commend Buhari, Ezefe, PDP, Afenifer, and others say. Also, APC rallies support for new service chiefs. Others set targets. In the southeast, tension mounts in Olu as soldiers take over town. We can also see on the Daily Independent, one killed as police and Shiites clash again in Abuja. I lost property is worth 50 million naira to arsonists, says uh, Sunday Igbo. And um, on COVID-19, Yabatek loses director, others closure of medical center and students hostel. 5G deployment faces hurdles. Operators grapple with infrastructure challenges. And uh, we also have uh, court orders, a final for feature of ex-Governor Yari's 25.53 billion naira. Uh, the last one, CBN retains NPR at 11.5%, warns against total lockdown of the economy. I'm going to start with uh, Mr. Akimbola this morning. Uh, you can take one story from uh, the Daily Independent. Let's see, uh, see your, let's hear your thoughts on it. Okay. Thank you once again. Um, obviously, the, the, um, the most interesting issue today in Nigeria is the replacement of the service chiefs. Uh, first of all, there has been uh, unnecessary argument over whether they resigned or whether they were fired. The important thing is that they were replaced. I don't agree that it's too late in the day. Uh, it's better than not even doing it at all. Obviously, the previous service chiefs, they haven't done well, as we can all see. And those who are coming in, I really don't see any magic that they're going to perform. It's going to take time. We're talking about security architecture that has been heavily corrupted and compromised. We're talking about low morale among the forces. We're talking about even funding issues. So it's going to take them some time. So we shouldn't expect any miracle from them. Okay, But quite frankly, this is long overdue. We've been calling for it, and we can only hope that this new set of service chiefs will do better than their predecessors. So I don't agree that it's late. It, it, it's better we get it right. And let's see what will happen in the next one year. But I can assure you, it's going to be very tough and very challenging. I'm not expecting any magic from them. Um, the killings, the kidnappings are not going to stop suddenly because we have new service chiefs. It takes some time. And we, and we need to see exactly the direction of the new strategic policy in terms of defense for the country. And of course, finally, there's the issue of even the party language of the overall leadership of Nigeria. Okay, if President Buhari continues to be weak and ineffective as he has been, then there's little or no magic that the service chiefs are going to perform. So it's a welcome development, but I'm not expecting any, any miracle. All right. All right. Mr. Lodgede, uh, you could also speak on that briefly, or we just move to talking about Sunday Google's house uh, oh, that was yeah. burnt, you know, and how this affects the whole conversation and, you know, seeking peace in the Southwest. Uh, for the security chiefs, I think it's better late than, uh, than never. Um, like Demola said, it, there are two sides to this. There is a bigger problem, which is systemic. So the main security issues are systemic. And the fact that you change these guys does not necessarily um, take away those systemic issues. However, when you put new people in position, um, they come with new ideas, they, they understand the system, they know the problems in that system, and they also want to show um, some bit of performance. If you remember when the guys that are going now came in, they met a force that was in full swing towards the end of general, uh, towards the end of GEJs at me, the guys were really, you know, chasing out those, those uh, insurgents. So these people leverage on that, and for the next seven months or one year, there were a whole lot of achievements. 
All of a sudden, all those bombs that were going off in Abuja, whether it is Force Headquarters or Yan Yan uh, Motor Park, all those things stopped in reality. All those flags that were being hoisted in, in certain uh, uh, local government went to an end. But after that, so what happens? We lost it at some point. And these guys were due for removal a long time ago, but the president is always very slow in his decision process. Whether it is in appointment of ministers or in removing uh, a secretary to the federal government who have been accused of graft, whatever it is you want to talk about, his decision process is very slow. And we lost time by virtue of this. But let's congratulate the new guys and believe and hope and work with them in whatever way as citizens we can to ensure uh, they succeed. All right. I think because of time, let's just quickly move to another paper. Hopefully, uh, the Igbo story will come up um, in one of those the next uh, paper. All right. So we have the Nigerian Tribune here, and uh, it's still the story about the replacement of the service chiefs. This one says, as Buhari appoints new service chiefs, SMBLF, PANDEF, WK, Unwodo, APC, and the PDP react, set agenda. COVID-19, CBN to further roll out palliatives, warns FG against lockdown, retains all indicative rates. Community policing, 18,360 personnel recruited nationwide for takeoff. Fire and police service give uh, insight into Igboho's house fire incident. And what Ojidu says about me false, and that's according to Sunday Buhu, he also denies interest in leading Amotekun. Also, Buhari directs Naseni to produce helicopter. One injured, many ki one killed and many injured as police clash with Shiites in Abuja. Quit notice to herdsmen, unity of Nigeria paramount, and that's according to the federal government. Kidnappers abduct 14 at gunpoint in Kogi State. Mother, three kids, eight others die in accident in Benue State. Six killed, others missing as Akwaibom, Abia boundary war escalates. As well as this one saying customs intercept 219 sacks of pangolin, others at Lagos Port. And also the story of, uh, you know, insecurity in Oyo State. It says... What we did to battle insecurity in Ibarapa, Okiogun, or your government. And it goes on to say, Fire Me inaugurates Farmers Herders Peace Committee. Our people cannot continue to live in fear. And that's according to Akiri Dulu. Ghani Adams lords Southwest governors on new security arrangements with herders and as well as suspected herdsmen invade a kitty forest reserve, destroy a multi-million naira maize farm. Mr. Uh, Akimbola, let's bring you in here to discuss this issue uh, in uh, or your state. Samuel's house was burnt yesterday at around 3 a.m. And uh, the police has now given an insight into that. And uh, what basically is your reaction to this? Remember that he had, first of all, gone to uh, invaded the Fulani settlement and burnt the house for that. Would you say it's a tit-for-tat measure? What would, you, what would you describe this as right now? Thank you. There is a obvious failure of leadership on the part of Governor of, of Governor Mankino of your state. And nature was vacuum. Okay. The killings have gone on like forever and nothing has been done. Forget about all this PR stuff that what we did to battle insecurity. What did you do? Obviously, what you what you did was not effective. And because a certain Sunday ago decided to take it upon himself to challenge the Fulanese. Now we are seeing a flurry of actions, a flurry of activities. Okay, and I tell people, no matter what you say about Sunday goes past, today he has been able to force some measure of actions from our state government. So so unfortunate that it took a Sunday go for Governor Makido to suddenly wake up and realize that there's problem. Okay. The killings didn't happen yesterday. They didn't, I mean, they've always been there. Nothing was done. Okay, so on the issue of the burning of Sunday goals, I, I, I don't know who did it. We don't know yet. And if the accounts that we, we read um, about what happened when he went to challenge the Seliki Fulani, I don't think that 
Sunday was spared a team that went to one. It was a spontaneous action on the part of the youth of that area. And that is what you, 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 you have when there's a failure of security forces, when they've been compromised and they're not doing their job. And I tell you, there are so many Sunday goals in the whole of Southwest who are waiting. I'm not supporting criminality and I'm not supporting lawlessness. But for God's sake, let the security forces do their job. And what Sunday, what Sunday goal has proved that if they don't do their job, there's always someone who is going to spare it. So that is basically what we All are right. having in your state. So we wait for the police to tell us to investigate and tell us who went to burn Sunday Bo's house. Wow. And for all you care, this, this could be uh, another prank by Sunday Bo himself. Okay, oh, the okay. guy is full of um, conspiracy theories. Yeah. yeah, hopefully we get a proper investigation and some of the details that are uh, yeah. missing, you know, would yeah. be um, brought out. Let, let's also then move to Mr. Olujide now. Uh, the COVID-19, the CBN is you're talking about rolling out more palliatives. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Um, palliatives uh, will help to create the necessary spending. You see, spending helps to stimulate economy. So when we have a situation that we have right now where... Uh, a lot of people's disposable income, their capacity to spend has been curtailed by COVID. Whatever you do in that space to show up people's income or capacity to earn or spend will help to stimulate the economy and will help us to get out of uh, recession faster. Uh, if you also don't do it, uh, well, on, on the lockdown side of things, I, I think CBN also mentioned that we, we, it's not something to contemplate. So whatever we need to do to ensure we don't go in that lockdown direction uh, it's also something that must be on the mind of all of us, even as citizens, because it is in the obedience to those preventive measures that we can actually avoid all this lockdown kind of situations. Okay, quickly, I don't, I'm not sure if we have time, but we can quickly just jump to the nation this morning. Um, it says there, Moteco intercepts headers with guns in all your state. Um, also, a uh, waiting game continues for ambassadors uh, designate an ex-governor forfeits 700 million naira to the government. Also in the nation, and uh, Sunday Boho again, Yoruba leaders back in criminal heads men. Um, or rather, he says, some Yoruba leaders back in criminal heads men. Those who set fire to my house are cowards. And also, new salary structure for police coming. We also see here what we expect from new service chiefs, and that is uh, from Nigerians. Generals, leaders, uh, lawmakers, and others set agenda. And um, we can also see uh, on the nation, CBN boosts economy with 8.8 .8 trillion naira to battle COVID-19 effect. APC promises compliance with COVID-19 protocols during registration. Um, now, um, Mr. Akimbola, I'm going to, you know, start with you, you know, as um, let's uh, get you into speak uh, on Amoteco and of course, uh, uh, more and more headers with guns. Uh, what are your reactions to that? Um, and of course, uh, I mean, what ways do you think that they can continue to become, you know, the answer to the challenge with regards to security in the Southwest? Okay. Kudos to the Amatakun team for that exploit. What I see happening in the next six months is that people will tend to rely more on this Amatakun force for their security rather than depending on the police. Um, we've talked about community policing and what Amatakun is proving to us is that community policing is an idea whose time has come. Nobody can stop it. Okay? The, the signs are homeless. The police is totally overstretched, okay, compromised, corrupted, um, they've lost focus, okay. and with Amatekun coming up with all these interventions, the profile and the stature of this particular force will, will continue to grow. So yes, but as much as possible, we need to ensure they operate within the abyss of the law, okay, and there's tendency for them to get carried away and to, and to, and to, and to do things with, yeah, to do things which are not really allowed by law. Briefly, I want to talk about the CBN plan to post the economy with 8.8 trillion, 8 .8 trillion naira. With due apology uh, to economists, uh, Mr. Day and the rest of out there, I do not see these measures actually being effective on the long run. Because what we have at the end of the day, you're going to have too much money chasing very few goods. When you continue to pump money into an economy that is not producing, 
to people who have the purchasing power, but where are the goods? So the prices of goods and services are likely to go up, and inflation, which is already in double digit, may be further exacerbated. So that's 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 really a concern for me. I would rather that we put this money into productive activities that will lead to employment generation, that will lead to production, rather than just inflating the economy, pushing money to the economy. That to me is, is like a panic reaction. Yes, people's purchasing power has been seriously affected by COVID-19, but the solution is not in putting more money in people's hands. What would they do with the money? Where are the goods? Where are the services? All right. All right. Um, let's let's deal. quickly turn to the Punch newspaper in the less than five minutes that we have, and the stories here are still the same about the replacement of the service chiefs. Sunday Boho's story here still coming up. Amotech as well. But looking at the ones who've not touched on other papers, it says high recurrent expenditure raises debt servicing challenges, says CBN. Slash on imported vehicles duties begins next week, according to customs. Exporters, importers' woes worsening at ports, laments LCCI. Exam for a governor, Yari, for feats embezzled 284 million naira to the federal government. And this one saying the NECO postpones GCE, as well as reschedules papers missed during NSARS protests. Um, Mr. Bolaho, would you like to take any of these ones in the less than two minutes that we have now? Oh, the uh, Zamfara, uh, Yari lost of her. I, I, I think this has to do with uh, all those benefits that are agreeable to ex-governors that have been removed. And, and these are things we honestly need to revisit across all the states. Because Zamfara is not the only one. I think Lagos has also reviewed uh, his own situation. There are several other states that are involved in this scam. This is a scam. Somebody has sat for four years and he appropriated for himself millions and millions of naira over, over the rest of his, 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 his lifetime. It's abhorrent. And I think we need to stop it. Hmm. Okay. Uh, there's also the, you know, I think it was on the Daily Independent this morning that um, it was stated that he was going to be forfeiting um, um, yes, uh, 25.53 billion naira. Um, one would expect that, I, I, I don't know your thoughts on uh, plea bargaining and simple forfeiture without <clears throat> jail time that, you know, kind of looks similar to the crimes it, it, of the it's also, what One also need to ask, what kind of forfeiture is this? Is it the one that uh, maybe in properties or something that I will still go to court and challenge? You see, the problem is, we allow access to this huge fund. When people have 30 something billion, you said, in their care, that case will not finish in 10 years now. <laughs> Is it, that's the reality. Because you can pay all the sands in the world, you can corrupt the judiciary, you can do all sorts of things. And in the next 10 years, that case will be in court. So prevention, prevention, prevention should be the emphasis of our anti-corruption fight. Make it very difficult for people to have access to those kind of money and, and take it away from the system. Once they do, you keep chasing them. It, it, it really just, you know, is a reminder of, you know, what we truly, you know, would define as the fight against corruption, you know, and arresting big men and, and people who have stolen never really, you know, has It, it doesn't deliver the goods. Yes. All right. Um, we're out of time. Uh, Mr. Demola Kimbola, thank you so much for thank stopping you. by for being with us this morning. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And thank you, Mr. Yeah, Palaho. Thank you for having me. <laughs> All right, it's a wrap here on Off the Press. Let's now go straight to discussing what happened today in history many years ago. Do stay with us. <laughs>